Okay, so let's recall a few things that we've already talked about. The first is the definition of the six, tri six trig functions using uh, a right triangle for an acute angle theta. Okay, so here's the angle theta, here's the right angle. The sine of the angle is the opposite over the hypotenuse. The cosine of the angle is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. The tangent of theta is the opposite over the adjacent. The secant of theta is the hypotenuse divided by the adjacent. Okay, so it's the reciprocal of the cosine. The cosecant of theta is the reciprocal of sine, so it's the hypotenuse over the opposite. And the cotangent of theta is the reciprocal of the tangent of theta, so it's the adjacent side over the opposite side. Okay, using these definitions of sine and cosine, we extended them to find the sine and the cosine of any angle, not just an acute angle. Let me remind you of what we did there. So here's how we defined it, or defined these two, the sine of theta and the cosine of theta. So we said, okay, draw the terminal side of the angle theta in standard position. Choose any point on the terminal side of theta, so call that x comma y. R is the distance from that point to the origin. So that means that r is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. Then we naturally extended the definition of sine as the opposite over the hypotenuse to say that the sine of any angle theta is equal to the y-coordinate divided by r. And we extended the definition of cosine that says it's the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And the natural way of saying that the cosine of theta is the x-coordinate divided by r. Okay, so in the same way, we can extend the definitions of the four remaining trig functions. I'll do that as follows. So the tangent of theta is equal to the opposite side over the adjacent side. And so that's equal to the y-coordinate divided by the x-coordinate. The cosecant of theta is the reciprocal of the sine of theta, so that's r divided by y. The secant of theta is the reciprocal of the cosine of theta, so that's r divided by x. And finally, the cotangent of theta is the reciprocal of the tangent of theta, so that's x divided by y. Okay, so now we have the definitions of all six trig functions for any angle theta, where we find any point on the terminal side of the angle theta, and we use the coordinates of that point, together with r, to find the values of the six trig functions. Okay, let's do some specific examples. Okay, let's evaluate the tangent of 60 degrees using this definition right here. So what we want to do is we want to draw a 60 degree angle and we want to find any point on the terminal side of that 60 degree angle. Well we are very familiar with 30, 60, 90 right triangles. Let me draw one of those for you. Okay so here's a 30, 60, 90 right triangle. So here is the 60 degree angle what we're looking for, this point right here, is this vertex right here. So we see we have to go over one unit and up square root of three. So that tells us that x is one and y is square root of three. r is this distance right here, which is the hypotenuse. So r is equal to two. So tangent of 60 degrees is the y-coordinate divided by the x-coordinate. And so that's equal to square root of 3 divided by 1, which is just the square root of 3. Okay, let me have you try a couple. Okay, press pause while you work on these two. Okay, you should have found that the secant of 60 degrees is 2, and the cotangent of 60 degrees is 1 over square root of 3. So we see that the secant of theta is r divided by x, 
r is this length here, and using the Pythagorean theorem, we find that that length is 2. The x-coordinate is 1, so we have r divided by x is 2 over 1, and that's 2. The cotangent of theta is x over y. So in this case, for 60 degrees, x is 1 and y is root 3, so we get 1 over square root of 3. Okay, let's do another one together. Okay, to find the cosecant of 30 degrees, we need to find a point on the terminal side of 30 degrees. And we can use this triangle up here to do that. So that's our 30 degree angle. So we see we have to go over root 3 and up 1. So over root 3 and up 1 takes us to the point root 3 comma 1. Okay, uh, I, I'm going through this a little quickly because I already covered it in the sine and cosine of any angle videos. So you should watch those if you need more practice on finding a point on the terminal side. Okay, so the cosecant of 30 degrees, if you go up here, you'll see that the cosecant of an angle is r divided by the y-coordinate. This r here is the square root of root 3 squared plus 1 squared, which is root 3 squared is 3, 1 squared is 1, so it's the square root of 3 plus 1, which is the square root of 4, which is 2. Okay, so it's still the same r as up here because we're still using the same exact triangle. The hypotenuse is the value of r. Okay, so the cosecant of 30 degrees, we take r divided by the y-coordinate, so we get 2 over 1, which is 2. Okay, why don't you evaluate the tangent of 30 degrees? Okay, tangent of 30 degrees is y divided by x, so it's equal to 1 divided by square root of 3, which if you want to, you can rationalize the denominator and write this as the square root of 3 divided by 3. Okay, why don't you evaluate these two? So the first thing that we need to do is find a point on the terminal side of 180 degrees. The terminal side is the negative x-axis, so we can choose any point here. Let's choose the point, say, negative 5, comma, 0. Now, the tangent of 180 degrees is the y-coordinate divided by the x-coordinate. Here the y-coordinate is 0, the x-coordinate is negative 5. 0 divided by negative 5 is 0, so that means that the tangent of 180 degrees is equal to 0. Okay, the secant of 180 degrees is r divided by the x-coordinate. This length here is r. Since we went out 5 units to the left, that tells us that r is equal to 5. So r divided by x is equal to 5 divided by the x-coordinate of negative 5. 5 divided by negative 5 is negative 1. So that says that the secant of 180 degrees is negative 1. Okay, so what you see here is to find any trig function of any angle, you just need to find a point on the terminal side of that angle and use the coordinates to find the value of the trig function.